What's up you guys, it's Matt here. So in this video, I wanted to go over a versus series. Basically, obviously you know what I'm going over because of the uh, title, probably the thumbnail as well, um, but I'm doing a versus series for the Amex Platinum and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Before I start, make sure that you hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And remember that I'm doing a giveaway, which I'll get into all of the details at the end of the video. So stick around till then. So the Chase Sapphire Reserve versus the Amex Platinum. There's a bunch of people that say that they wouldn't get the Reserve card. There's a bunch of people that say that they wouldn't get the Platinum card. And there are valid reasons behind both. Now, I'm a person that really likes to see numbers. Um, in front of me and maybe I might be missing a couple of things but I I don't I have my own opinion and um, I'm gonna give you that opinion at the end of this video but um, I mean everybody has everybody's entitled to their own opinion and if they feel some type of way because they have a certain card then they can feel that way um, but I'm gonna get into the breakdown and give you numbers first I'm gonna break down what they have and then I'll break down a scenario um, in some way. So let's start with the Amex Platinum card. The Amex Platinum card has a $550 annual fee, which is pretty heavy. Um, both of these cards have a uh, annual fee that's pretty high. Um, the Platinum card also has a $200 airline credit, a $200 Uber credit, a $100 Saks Fifth Avenue credit, and that equals up to about $500, which will give you about $50 um, left as an annual fee. You also have five times on travel, through airlines and Amex Travel, you have five times on prepaid hotels through Amex Travel. You have lounge access, which some people say is really amazing. It's probably the best perk of this card. Um, you also have global entry every four years, and this card is, like I said, for the traveler. So let's get into um, the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Hopefully I do a quicker job in this video explaining all this stuff um, and then breaking it down because I don't want to have videos that go, you know, 20 minutes long. Um, but, you know, if it happens, it happens. But before I get into the next card, make sure that you hit the like button. That really helps me out. So go ahead and hit that like button. I'll get into this in just a second. Did you hit it yet? Okay, so the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Um, let's get into the breakdown of that card so you have 450 dollars annual fee um that's heavy it's not as heavy as the um, platinum card which is 550 um you have a 300 dollars travel credit which is really good that takes away from the annual fee which leaves you with about 150 dollars left for an annual fee you have three times points on travel um, and dining you have one times on everything else and the value of your points are one point five cents per point with chase ultimate rewards one cent everywhere else um, you do get priority pass so some form of lounge access not to the magnitude of um, the platinum card um, but you have access to over 900 airport lounges um, which is definitely a good thing now when i think of this card when i think of both of these cards i think that basically they're the cream of the crop they're like the top cards um in our era basically i understand you have more premium cards that are or luxury cards that most people won't even be able to uh, apply to um, but these are the premium cards that everybody can apply to as long as you have a certain credit score um, so what i think about these two cards are they're both for the traveler if you're not a traveler then you shouldn't even be considering these two cards to tell you the truth I'm not a traveler yet. I want to travel. Once I get to a point to where I travel four to five times a year, then I'll consider one of these cards. Probably the Platinum in my opinion, but um, I'll consider one of the cards. So bonuses aside, both of these cards are very solid. Um, do I think that one card is better than the other? Yes, obviously you just heard me say that I would pick the Amex card um, over the Chase card just because I'm kind of used to Amex and you're used to what you're used to. Um, but let's get into the numbers. So basically, I'm going to show you um, it's a person that spends $10,000 on travel and it's nothing else. It's just saying that you're getting the maximum amount, maximum value um, from this card. Um, basically saying you get three times with the reserve card and you get five times with the platinum card. So let's dig into it so say you spend ten thousand dollars on travel now we're starting with an annual fee of fifty dollars for the platinum card because you have all the credits and then you have hundred and fifty dollars for the reserve card to make up because you have that one credit which is a three hundred dollar travel credit 
with the platinum card, you get five times points uh, of that $10,000 worth of travel, which is $50,000 makes it easy. Sorry, 50,000 points, um, which is $500 in value at one cent per point. I know some people say that Amex points are actually um, devalued a little bit. They're not actually at one cent per point, but that's what I'm, I'm putting it as, as one cent per point because I haven't seen otherwise. Um, using my points, I haven't seen otherwise. Maybe on hotels, but on, on travel and travel related, um, stuff, it's not really, it's one cent from what I've seen. So, um, you also get lounge access, which a lot of people value at thousands of dollars, depending how much they travel. And if they have an airport that's very close to them that has a Centurion lounge that has, you know, these, um, very, very private lounges. Um, so all in all, you're profiting, let's say without the lounges, um, you're profiting $450, um, in total when it comes to getting value for those points, right? Now with the reserve card, you have $150 annual fee, you have three times points, and then you have basically that's 30,000 points that you get. Um, but, um, Chase's value of their points are 1.5 cent per point, which will give you that value of $450 for the 30,000 points. So that brings your total that you're profiting to 300. So basically you're getting $150 more value out of the platinum card than you would the reserve card. Now you do have priority pass with this card as well. Um, but I mean, it's not as valuable as the platinum card Centurion lounge access. So I feel like the platinum card really wins this battle and if you feel otherwise then you know go ahead and say in the comments down below i'll gladly uh respond to you um but i just don't see the point if you have that much of an annual fee left over after the credit is applied um it, it's kind of sad and if they gave you more points for travel and dining then yes i would understand but it seems like chase is a little bit stingy when it comes to the amount of points that they're giving you but they're not stingy with the amount that you're getting back in value for those points. So, I mean, it could be a break even between the two, but from what you see here, I mean, it's not a break even. Uh, the platinum card came out on top. So I feel like the platinum card will win this battle, um, every time. Now, maybe there's some instances to where the chase card will win the battle but i don't see the point in it if i had to choose between the two which i will in the future it's going to be the platinum card um and a lot of people like looks of cards too i'm a person that really likes the look of cards um and i like really getting compliments on cards but um the platinum card the gold card they just look like they're premium cards and i understand the reserve card um still has a great look to it it's a very modern look but it doesn't feel like a luxury look. It feels like a luxury card, but it doesn't feel like a luxury look. Like if I pulled that card out of my wallet, a lot of people that didn't know credit cards would mistake that for just a regular credit card. But when I pull my platinum, I don't have a platinum, but when I pull my gold card out of my card uh, or I'm out of my wallet, what is wrong with me? When I pull my gold card out of my wallet, a lot of people will know that that is a premium card right from the start. Um, so I can imagine what they, what they say or what they think with the platinum card, but, um, you shouldn't really care about what people think. I guess I kind of do. Um, when you show your face on the internet, you, you kind of have to care a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my review for the card. It's a really, really good card. Um, all of them. So that's my review or basically my challenge between the two cards. Like I said, the Amex Platinum card came out on top. If you disagree with me, shoot me a comment down below. Um, yeah, so go ahead and do that. I, I feel like I'm going to get some hate mail on uh, people that really love the reserve card. Um, but whatever, it's my opinion. So hopefully you do like this video. If you do, hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. And remember that I'm doing a giveaway of two Amazon gift cards when I hit my 2,000 subscriber mark. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Um, every 1,000 subscribers after that, I'm giving away more Amazon gift cards or more gift cards in general. Let me know what you actually want the gift cards on. If you just want plain Visa gift cards, then I could possibly do that um, just because you could spend it anywhere that you want, not just Amazon um, supporting these huge tech companies that are paying $0 in taxes. But that's another that's another issue because I just bought something off of Amazon 
uh, two days ago. So uh, I'm one of those people. Um, but um, hopefully you do like this video, but I'm going to have to get out of here. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.